In this section, I'm going to be considering the Fourier transform and its relationship to linear time invariant systems. We'll see how an LTI system can be characterized in the frequency domain using the Fourier transform and the system's frequency response, and we'll examine various aspects of the frequency response in more detail. Lastly, we'll consider the family of LTI systems that are characterized by linear differential equations with constant coefficients. And for such systems, we'll see how the differential equation representation of the system is related to its frequency response. At this point, I'd like to consider the relationship between linear time invariant systems and the Fourier transform. So suppose that we have an LTI system with input little x, output little y, and impulse response little h. And let big X, big Y, and big H denote the Fourier transforms of little x, little y, and little h respectively. We know from earlier that the LTI system is governed by an equation of this form. In other words, we have that the output of the system denoted by little y is equal to the input to the system denoted little x convolved with the impulse response of the system little h. And if we take the Fourier transform of this particular equation using the convolution property of the Fourier transform, what we obtain is this particular equation here. And in this equation, the function big H is referred to as the frequency response of the system. In other words, the Fourier transform of the impulse response is called the frequency response. And the frequency response function is extremely important because it completely characterizes the behavior of the system. In other words, if we know the function big H, we can determine for any given input what the output of the system will be. Because if we're given some input little x, we can find its Fourier transform big X, which we can then substitute into the right-hand side here, multiplying by big H, and then we can use this to determine big Y. And from big Y, we can find little y, the output of the system. This particular equation also provides an alternative way of viewing the behavior of an LTI system. In particular, we can view an LTI system as operating on frequency spectra, in other words, we present the LTI system with some particular spectrum as input, which is big X, which it then multiplies by the function big H, the frequency response, to produce the output spectrum big Y. In the most general case, the frequency response function big H is complex valued. For this reason, it's sometimes convenient to represent this function in polar form. In other words, we represent big H in terms of its magnitude and argument. So as a matter of terminology, the magnitude of the frequency response of the system is referred to as the magnitude response of the system. And the argument of the frequency response of the system is known as the phase response of the system. Now on the previous slide, we saw that this particular relationship holds. In other words, the Fourier transform of the output of the system, which is denoted as big Y, is equal to the Fourier transform of the input to the system, which is denoted as big X, times the frequency response, which is denoted as big H. Now, if we take the magnitude of both sides of this equation, this gives us this relationship here. And what this particular equation says is that the magnitude spectrum of the output of the system is equal to the magnitude spectrum of the input to the system times the magnitude response of the system. Similarly, we can take the argument of both sides of this equation, and if we do this, what we obtain is this particular equation here. And what this particular equation says is that the phase spectrum of the output of the system is equal to the phase spectrum of the input to the system plus the phase response of the system. In practice, the impulse response of an LTI system is often real-valued. So now I'd like to consider how the impulse response being real-valued impacts the frequency response. To begin, recall that the frequency response big H is simply the Fourier transform of the impulse response little h. So if little h is real, big H must be conjugate symmetric. Furthermore, the condition of conjugate symmetry is equivalent to these two conditions here. The first of these two conditions essentially says that the magnitude response of the system is even, and the second of these two conditions simply says that the phase response of the system is odd. Often, block diagrams provide a very convenient way in which to represent systems. 
When dealing with LTI systems, it's often beneficial to represent systems in the frequency domain. When drawing block diagrams that correspond to a frequency domain representation, we often label each of the LTI systems with their frequency response. The frequency response makes a good label for an LTI system, since an LTI system is completely characterized by its frequency response. For example, we can use a diagram like this one shown on the slide to denote an LTI system whose frequency response is big H, whose input spectrum is big X, in other words the Fourier transform of the input of the system is big X, and whose output spectrum is big Y, in other words the Fourier transform of the output of the system is big Y. Earlier in the course we were introduced to two basic ways in which systems can be interconnected. In particular we looked at series interconnections and parallel interconnections of systems. What I'd like to do on this slide is revisit these two types of interconnections in the context of linear time invariant systems that are represented in the frequency domain. First let's consider the case of series interconnections. Earlier in the course we saw that the series interconnection of two LTI systems behaves as a single LTI system with an impulse response equal to the convolution of the individual system impulse responses. From this we can infer the following by using the convolution property of the Fourier transform. If we have two LTI systems, one with frequency response H1 and one with frequency response H2, and we connect these two systems in series with one another, as is shown here, these systems overall behave as a single LTI system whose frequency response is simply the product of H1 and H2. Now let's consider parallel interconnections. Earlier in the course we saw that the parallel interconnection of two LTI systems behaves as a single LTI system with an impulse response equal to the sum of the individual system impulse responses. From this we can infer the following by using the linearity property of the Fourier transform. If we have two LTI systems, one with frequency response H1 and one with frequency response H2, and then we connect these systems in parallel in the manner that's shown here, these systems behave overall as a single LTI system whose frequency response is a sum of H1 and H2. Of all of the types of LTI systems in existence, one class of LTI systems of great practical interest is the class whose members are each characterized by an nth order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. In particular, each system in this class is characterized by a differential equation of this particular form here, where in this equation, little x denotes the input to the system, little y denotes the output of the system, the a, k, and b, k are complex constants, and the integers m and n satisfy an inequality of this form. And essentially what we have in this equation on the left hand side is a linear combination of derivatives of the output and on the right hand side we have a linear combination of derivatives of the input. Suppose now that for the LTI system defined by this differential equation we let little h denote the impulse response of the system and let big X, big Y, and big H denote the Fourier transforms of little x, little y, and little h respectively. One can then show that the frequency response big H is given by this particular formula here. And notice that big H is a rational function. In particular it's a rational function in the variable omega. And as it turns out this is one of the reasons why rational functions play quite an important role in systems theory. At this point I'd like to consider a couple of examples related to some of the material presented on this slide. And to begin with I'd like to consider example 6.34. In this example we're given an LTI system with the input little x and the output little y that's characterized by this particular differential equation here where the prime symbols denote derivatives. And what we're asked to do is we're asked to find the frequency response big H of this system. So the first thing we're going to do is take the Fourier transform of this equation here that defines the system. And to do this we're going to use the differentiation property of the Fourier transform which is stated here in this annotation. So essentially every time we take a derivative we're going to multiply by j omega in the frequency domain. 
So when we do this, what we're going to get for the Fourier transform of this equation is this equation below, where everywhere where we're taking a derivative, we're multiplying by j omega in the frequency domain. What we're going to then do next is we're going to take all the terms that involve big Y over to the left side of the equation and all the terms that involve big X over to the right side of the equation and we're going to factor out the big Y on the left side of the equation and factor out the big X on the right side of the equation. And when we do this, this gives us this next line here. And now we're going to make the observation that since we're trying to find big H, we know that any LTI system satisfies an equation of this form. In other words, the Fourier transform of the output is equal to the Fourier transform of the input times the frequency response for the system. And we can rearrange this equation and solve for big H. So we have big H is equal to big Y over big X. So what we have here is an equation that has big Y's and big X's in it. So if we can rearrange this equation and write it in the form of big Y over big X equals something, that something must be the frequency response because big Y over big X is equal to the frequency response. So this is what motivates the next step. We're going to divide both sides of this equation by big X, which is going to cancel the big X on the right and then bring the big X into the denominator on the left. And we're also going to divide both sides of this equation by this quantity in round brackets that's multiplying big Y. And when we do this, this is going to cancel this factor on the left and move it to the denominator on the right, which gives us this line that's written in as an annotation. And then the next step is we observe that big Y over big X is simply equal to big H. So we have this result here, which is what we are asked to find. In other words, the frequency response of the system is given by this right-hand side expression here, which is a rational function in omega. Lastly, it's worthwhile to note what we've actually managed to accomplish in this example in more general terms. In this example, effectively what we've done is convert from a representation of a system in terms of a differential equation, like this equation here, into a representation of a system in terms of its frequency response, like this representation here. This type of conversion can be quite beneficial when we prefer to work with a system represented in terms of its frequency response rather than in terms of a differential equation. The next example I'd like to consider is example 6.35. In this example, we're given an LTI system with input little x, output little y, and frequency response big H, where big H is given by this particular formula here. And we're asked to find the differential equation that characterizes this system. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to observe that because the system is LTI, it satisfies an equation of this form here. In other words, the Fourier transform of the output, which is denoted as big Y, is equal to the Fourier transform of the input, which is denoted by big X, times the frequency response of the system, which is denoted by big H. And we can rearrange this equation to solve for big H, which gives us big H is equal to big Y over big X. Therefore, in this formula here, or this equation here, we can replace big H by big Y over big X. And that gives us this next line here. Next, we're going to rewrite this equation as the numerator of the left-hand side times the denominator of the right-hand side is equal to the numerator of the right-hand side times the denominator of the left-hand side. And when we do this, this gives us this particular equation here. And then what we're going to do next is for each of the terms in this equation, we're going to rewrite them so that they show explicit powers of j omega. So for example, in this first term here, where we have a minus omega squared, this minus omega squared can be rewritten as j omega all squared. So we're going to do this sort of transformation for each of these terms, and this gives us this next line here. And then lastly, we're going to take the inverse Fourier transform of this equation, and to do this we use the differentiation property of the Fourier transform, which is written in this annotation here. So what this property says is in the frequency domain, each multiplication by j omega corresponds to a differentiation operation in the time domain. So for example, in this first term here, where we have a j omega all squared, this is going to correspond to a second derivative of y in the time domain. So using this idea for all of the terms here on this line, we get this next line here.
And this is the differential equation that we're looking for. In other words, this is our final answer. This particular differential equation defines the behavior of the LTI system that we're dealing with in this example. Lastly, it's worthwhile to note what we've actually managed to accomplish in this example in more general terms. In this example, effectively what we've done is convert from a representation of a system in terms of its frequency response, for example something like this, to a representation of a system in terms of a differential equation, for example something like this. This type of conversion can be quite beneficial when we prefer to work with a system represented in terms of a differential equation rather than in terms of a frequency response.